Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to change your Mac Mini M1 into a fully functional workstation. Stay tuned. While the Mac Mini is designed to be minimalistic and with no fuss, that's fine for everyday, regular computer use. With the amount of power that you get from the M1 chip, there are many of us who would like to use it as an everyday workstation for photography and videography. Now there are many ways that you can configure your computer, so I'm just going to show you how I've configured mine. In case you've missed my last video, that one discusses how fast this actual setup is in a photography workflow. You can see that right up here. So let's have a look at how I have mine set up. As expected, the Mac Mini is beautifully minimalistic and is about as clean and perfect as you can get for a computer. Unfortunately, we have to add a few things. If you want to keep things as minimalistic as possible, you could use a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse or touchpad, and a single monitor. With that, you would not need any sort of hub. Unfortunately, I have way too many peripherals that require some sort of connection. I also don't want to have to deal with Bluetooth issues, which we have been hearing about since the M1 Max first came out. This leads us to the CalDigit TS3 Plus. The TS3 Plus is a small but port-filled hub that you can use between any computer and your peripherals. This isn't a TS3 review, but have a look at how many ports and options you have when you see everything that the hub can handle, as well as what you can plug directly into your Mac Mini. This isn't a hub review, so pause the video here if you want to have a closer look at everything that is offered. The first thing that we connect are our two 27-inch monitors. One of these is connected directly to the HDMI port on the back of the Mac Mini, and the other is connected to the TS3 hub and its display port. This worked straight out of the box, much to my relief. Since I bought my Mac Mini with only 512 gigabytes of storage space on the internal SSD, I opted to use very high-speed external SSDs for all of my working files. The only thing allowed on my internal SSD is the operating system and all of my applications. I use a wide variety of applications and this uses up approximately 320 gigabytes at this point. That gives me plenty of room to spare so that I don't have to worry about running out of space. My external drive consists of extremely fast M2 drives for a total of 3 terabytes. This amount allows me to not run out of space at very busy times and I don't have to spend time scrambling for working space. I also chose Sabrent drives because they are able to consistently give me the same speed as the internal SSDs. And these are connected to Thunderbolt 4 ports for maximum throughput. Connected to a USB-C 3.1 port is an external Sabrent 2-bay hard drive enclosure with two fast 8TB drives. These can both be written to at full read-write speed while using only one port. This amount of storage will typically last me for about two years. For interacting with my computer, I use a wired mechanical keyboard and a wired programmable mouse. These use up two USB-A ports. I use these because I don't like being interrupted while I work with Bluetooth issues and battery drainage. For added productivity, I also use a Shuttle Pro version 2 and a Loop Deck Plus. These are also fully programmable and I use up an additional two USB-A ports. My last USB-A device is my seldom used printer. This still leaves me with two spare USB-A ports. Now finally, rounding out all of the items that stay connected at all times is a pair of headphones and a microphone. These use up a headphone and a microphone jack. For devices that get connected to the computer once in a while, I use the front ports of the TS3. Unlike the Mac Mini, the TS3 has a, an SD slot for ingesting images and video. Thankfully, it's also very quick. All of my other devices like my phone, my drone, and my audio recorder get connected via micro USB and USB-C using the other front ports. For these, I just swap whatever cable is required at the time. Now this is where my diagram fails me and it makes it look like my computer is a complete mess. In reality, I quite like my setup and find it easy to use and not cluttered. At least by my standards. As previously mentioned, there are many ways and many hubs and a lot of peripherals that you can add to a Mac Mini. 
I was just actually really happy to see how easily everything worked together. The one thing that I would recommend though when you're putting all this stuff together is to make sure that you match the right ports with the right peripherals. Some ports only need low speed, like something that you would get from a USB-A, like a keyboard or a mouse, for example. But if you're using a high speed external SSD, you would want to use Thunderbolt or a fast USB-C port. If you have any questions or comments about this setup, please let me know in the comments below. I'd also be interested in hearing your experiences while doing the same thing. If you found this video helpful in any way, please hit the like button below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. For now, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day.